So let's make some rain with flame. Let's do it. So I have this sequence here, which is pretty long. If you guys look closely, pay attention. This is 2000 frames long sequence. So a bunch of shots in here. And if you needed to make rain on the sequence, will be a lot of Broto tracking layers and layers of, you know, simulations or, you know, a bunch of stock footage or, you know, things to make this to happen. And I got a training here. So let's see inference a node and hopefully you don't need to deal with that. So if you go to make it rain, I already have some checkpoints for us. I'm going to get the latest one that has been trained here. Let's remove the caching and let's see. And now you can see that the model is inference live in flame. Pay attention to this area here and you can see all the rain. And you can even scroll, which is amazing. So you can see something that's happening. Uh, you know, you can see the model is dealing with the reflections, is dealing with, you know, details of the drops of the water. So really nice stuff is happening here, really fast. And one thing that is really important before we move on, we need to be clear. This is based on this amazing work done in Paris, which they make the sequence here and showing it. And they did a breakdown to us of all of these shots. So almost 2000 frames long shots probably here. And you can see, I believe this was done manually, of course. So what I did was taking this and train a model and then I'm inferencing flame. Uh, so again, this guy is nailed. This is amazing work. And remember, this is 2000 frames long sequence. And then the training set that I have done was only 100 frames. You see there? So if you look here, and we go back to the beginning. So we see that it's only a hundred frames long. And that's what the model has got. It's basically, see here. So basically it's this. The whole sequence is 2000 frames long sequence with multiple shots for the training are only using a hundred frames long and then every shot it's covered by one to two frames each on this a hundred frames so that's the math so it's not even ten percent it's five percent of the sequence that was actually using as examples for training and the model needs to figure out the rest right so so now you can tell me okay so the model just learned what this was done there so it's just copying right and that is where things become really robust in my opinion it's for example let's say we have the shot here and we're gonna add some uh some transformations to the shot so to make sure like if the model really learned something you need to be able to replicate in different frames. And that's going to testing right now. So by adding some modifications, the model is going to be, needs to be able to do the rain on those modifications because that could be the, a new shot, right? So here's the model doing the, the rain. You can see a lot of color correction, a lot of stuff going on here in this shot. So if you add a context here, let's add a context. So context number one, and then let's add some transformation, some sort of like warping. So let's make like a brand new frame, especially in this area here. Oh, too much maybe? <laughs> I don't know, we, we can test it. So a little bit of there, a little bit of this. So this, this is becoming a brand new frame that the model never saw before, right? And this is why we want, we want the model to be able to, to do it. And now, you, if you can see here, you can see that it's still doing it. You can see like uh, the new edges, the new things. The model knows what to do because it learns how to do that. It's not just copying it. Because if it was copying it, new frames would be just fail. 
And what I felt really interesting with the context over there, and now we watch the context, and now we warp. We can warp almost in real time. You see the rain moving? This is amazing level of control you can do it so we now see what the mod is trying to recalculate based on your warping you know imagine how robust this is in terms of knowing the client can change a shot to do some variation on that shot and then you still know that the model if it learns well during training it knows how to do in new frames which is really amazing and that's why i feel this is a really robust you see like even changing huge transformation like this we still have the rain like if you go here see pretty heavily it still is it's know what to do with the calculation in my opinion even like if you go other shots very heavily it's still working and remember when i load the module so let's go back in there in france let's load a new one and i have other checkpoints, other epochs, what sometimes I like to do, because you learn so much from these modules, it's when you see those differences. So what I have in here, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's those checkpoints. So you see the first one that I got it with 81, 181, 700, and 1009, so the latest one. And when you go to see the difference, it's really interesting to see. Like you can see the first one, which you have a few of the drops, but it's still lacking color correction. You see the background there. And then later on, we got the color correction, but it's still too flat. And now it starts getting the volume. So, so it's really nice to see those differences because you get to learn how this mod is actually learning during the training, end, which is really, really nice. You can see here, if I zoom, let's see pan out so the epoch was just massive blur you see like color correction blur model really doesn't know what to do later on it, it got more you know consistent oh i know what to do now i understand the color correction but what's lacking layers of drops and then here later on you can start to see the water reflections the warps uh, the color correction variance the glows and then on the latest one here you can start to see everything coming together with more consistency so it's really interesting to do some exercise to see how these models are learning it during the process okay so let me show you how i got here all right so this was training with, let me show here, with two net, of course, the one that I post uh, uh, a few weeks ago. And then if you scroll down, that is an area here that converts the module to flame. So if we go to the, find, to the finder, so here is the current training so this is the latest training of the module so you can see here it was trained left is the original the middle one is the destination and the right side is what the model has been learned so far and then what i got let me go back there i got that checkpoint that you guys just saw and then let's convert this one right so let's do this together right so i go to the terminal so I'm going to grab this code here. This is the one to convert the module to flame. So let's do that. Let's copy. Actually, let's make this a brand new name just for testing. So GTS. Let's copy this. Let's add in here. And then let's convert. And then see, it gave the, the, the file format and then also the JSON file that Flame needs. You see that here it was converting and creating both for us. 
So all we have to do now is actually take that inference that was just made with the inference node. Mm, it was here, so let's refresh it just to be safe, right? And now we have it here, which if you go there, is this one here, right? So let's load it. Let's remove it and let's And there we go, see, tracking, everything is in there. The one that we just made together, if we add some transformation, so let's do some 2D transform in there, just to make sure it's full. And if you add scale, you can see that the model still knows what to do. Let's do some rotation. So this becomes a brand new shot. Some rotations, let's shear a little bit too. And now what we have, it's the model here. Knowing what to do, even with a brand new shot. Let's add some time warp. So let's create a brand new frames. Adding some motion, so let's add 50% of its speed. So now it becomes motion 50%. So this means Mario is still doing it, he still knows the brand new frames that we, you know, create a lot of transformations. We add new frames, and the Mario is there. So that's it, pretty much. Train a Mario, you got the file. You convert to flame here, and then you just load it and you are ready to go. And this is the training folder where everything gets saved from TuneNet. That's it, guys. Thank you.